Hey guys, it's Will from Breaking Designs here again, and I've got another tutorial for you. And this is how to create ribbons within Illustrator. Now I've created this ribbon here for you uh, to give you a preview of what we're going to create. So we're going to jump in and create that. So I'm going to create a new document of Command N, and then it's going to be 500 by 500 pixels, and um, to make it easier, so it's a nice square artboard. And then I'm going to create a rectangle with the M. We're pressing M, you'll get the rectangle tool, and then. There we go, we have a rectangle. I'm just going to move that rectangle back in, in a bit. And I've got my rectangle tool by pressing M, as you can see in the video. I'm going to press V to get my selection tool, and I'm just going to make sure it's in the center, which it is, it's directly in the center. And then I'm going to change the fill and the stroke. And I'm going to go up here and change the fill to this dark green, or to this normal green, sorry. And I'm going to change the stroke to nothing. So we don't have a stroke. And to make sure it's directly centered into the artboard, I'm going to highlight it, go up here into my vertical and horizontal selection and do that. And it should be right there in the center. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to name this one, I'm going to call it Front. And I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to lock this layer so you can't touch it anymore because it'll be easier in a bit. And I'm going to say um, Back. This layer is going to be called Back. Okay, so first thing you need to do is have your smart guide switched on. So you can do that by pressing Command U or Control U on Windows, and or you can come up to View and down here Smart Guides. And what this does is it enables you to um, so, uh, keep in line with this object here. So we're going to press M to get a rectangle tool. And what you need to do is you need to keep the same height as this uh, rectangle here. So I'm going to. Just trace it out here and you can see it snapping into places. I'm just going to move it by pressing and holding the space bar and moving it. And then I like that. So I'm going to hold the space bar and I'm going to move this down. And when you hold the space bar, it takes a whole object with you. So, you, so you're literally placing it somewhere. I'm going to move it down to about there. And you can see it's the same color. That's okay for now. Because what we're going to do is go up to the fill attribute here and we're going to choose a, a color down the swatch next to me. And you can choose any color, but you need to make sure to a swatch of the same color but uh, a darker variation not really dark but just a darker the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go up and create the uh, inner dip of the ribbon and that is like on this bit it's this sort of inner dip here I'm just going to go and expand this because it's annoying the crap out of me so this little dip here is what we need to create so the way we're doing this is that we're going to highlight it go up to object path and then go to add anchor points and what this will do is that it will add anchor points all the way around it so in between each anchor point is created another anchor point uh, directly in the center of it and this is a good thing to do so when we have um, our direct selection tool we can move these paths in so I'm going to select this path here I'm just going to move it in holding shift to about there and that will give us a little um, ribbon bit that we need then I'm going to go ahead and unlock this layer the front layer and I'm going to move this layer back um, and I can do this by highlighting it and then I'm going to go to arrange center back oh, hang on a sec, no that's wrong that's because I'm in a different layer so what we need to do is move this layer backwards and that will just move the whole of these layers in here back so that's a little mistake I made there so the second thing we need to do is work out the positioning. So the front of this, I'm going to lock it again. So the position of this, we're going to bring it up here, about there. And you know, I like that. That looks fine to me just there. The, th the next thing we need to do is we need to create something here to make give it a shadow or a bit of a ribbon feel because that's not good enough in itself. So we need to create another shape with a pen tool. So get your pen tool, and this is why Smart Guides comes in handy. So on, we're going to create a little triangle just here. So the way to do this is just to put a point here, and you can zoom in to help you if you want. I'm going to zoom in. And what you need to do is put a point here. If the smart guys will let me. And then put a point down here. Oops, did that wrong. Put a point down here. And you can't see it yet, but that's because it's the same color as this uh, green thing here. But then you need to put a point here. Put a point over here. And then you have your shape, and it's a closed path. Press V, and then go up to the fill. You need to uh, go up to the fill up here. And we're going to choose a darker green. And that will give it the sort of illusion that it's a bit of a ribbon, just there. The next thing we need to do is group these together. So I'm going to highlight them both, whilst this front layer is locked, and you can't highlight it at all. 
I'm going to highlight them both and that's all good and grouped. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press this key here or go to my line segment tool and then with smart guides it will tell you where the uh, the center or horizontal selection is and we're going to press a line all the way down here. We're going to create some guides by doing this. So I'm holding shift down to get the exact uh, placement of it. Now there's no stroke or fill or anything so I'm just going to go into my strokes up here and I'm going to press black and that's fine by me. And we've got that black stroke. And then I'm going to highlight it and make sure it's centered and everything within the artboard just like that. And then I'm going to just press command C and then command F to paste in front. Press E to get free transform holding shift and we're going to move it 90 degrees the copy of that. And then I'm going to hold uh, highlight both of these and then press command 5 and what you'll see is it's made some guides for us and that's an easy way of making guides within Illustrator to exactly what you want in the center of your artboard and we'll need this because we're going to move both of these things over there and now you can see that these lines here you can't actually touch them because they're guides so we're going to move all both of these over to the left hand side and we're going to reflect them so what you need to do is highlight them and then press O which will bring up the reflection tool hold down alt and go into the exact center of your art document and smart guides will help you get this and when you press down whilst holding alt you will get this little reflection box here now I know it's technically a horizontal reflect uh, uh, reflection that we've done but Illustrator works it in works it out with the guides so it's technically a vertical one because uh, the vertical um, horizontal uh, the vertical guide is the one that it's going by and we're going to move it by 90 degrees and I've got preview checked and you can check in the preview and what we want to do is we want to copy um, that over to there by pressing copy we have a copy of that one right there now that we've created that what we're going to do now is we're going to add some text into the ribbon but we're going to cut it out of the ribbon so I'm going to press T well first I'm going to press command and then semicolon to get rid of my guide and that just hides them and you can keep doing that if you want to but whatever and then I'm going to press uh, then I'm going to put your text in here. Your text, I don't want to spell it wrong. I might, did I spell it wrong on the other one? I didn't. I'm like a boss. Right, and then I'm going to move this down here. I'm going to expand it up and I'm going to make sure that we have a new layer on top of everything else. I'm going to move this text up here so it goes on top of it so we can see it because the layers work within hierarchy order. Right, now I'm going to press this layer and I'm going to bring it up. And if you want to get rid of the bounding box and use the scale tool, which is S, which is a scale tool, um, then what you have to do is press Command, Shift, and B to get rid of your bounding box. So you can't actually do it, but that's not even a good thing to do. Just get, keep your bounding box on. Right, and then I'm going to change my text with pressing Command T to bring up my text or character tool uh, window. And then I'm going to go and type in lobster because that's an awesome text, uh, font or typeface, whatever. Then I'm going to just press Command T again to get rid of it. I'm gonna um, have, I'm gonna outline this text because if we center align it, so what I want to do is I need to align it with this um, box here, or this rectangle there. So I'm gonna go to front. I'm gonna uh, stop the highlight for that. I'm gonna unlock it, and then if I did center align it, it wouldn't line perfectly because that's not the actual text. For what it looks like, it, it's too uh, random this bounding box. So I'm gonna have to first highlight it and then press command shift and O, which will create outlines of the text so it's no longer editable text it's a really editable text where you can change the anchor points and stuff of the text like so and you can move it around and stuff like that but uh, we don't want to do that so then I'm going to just do the exact same things so I'm going to select them both and then I'm going to select the inside again click it inside which will make the uh, ribbon this ribbon here, it'll tell this text that you have to center align it to this ribbon. So I'll do it again. So you just highlight it, highlight them both, so the ribbon and the text, and then you click the ribbon. And then when you center align it, it will not align it to the artboard, but it'll align it to the selection you've made here because you selected it twice. Then I am going to select them both again, just these both. And then I'm going to go to minus front in the Pathfinder. And when you click it, your text will disappear you'll have nothing in the middle it's been actually cut out of there the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select it all and press group and you could just finish it there if you want to do it there that's it that's finished and you can just scale that to however you want 
because we're an illustrator, import into Photoshop or whatever. Um, or what you can do is what I like to do sometimes is when you've selected it is go into your effects options. So you can go up to effect here or you can go to effects down here in the appearance panel. To get your appearance panel, you go to window, appearance panel, or just press shift F6. But we'll go to effect and then we're going to go to warp. And then warp, we need to go to flag. And then we've got our options here. So I'm going to just uh, set it to zero for now. I'm going to press preview. And then I'm going to move this bend up. And we'll have the preview checked. You can see that it has to bend and we can do it the other way we want it to. But we'll do it this way for now. And then you can do it so much that it distorts it. But we want to do it just very subtly. Um, so you can see that it's sort of waving like a flag. Press OK and you've done that. Now if you do, if you wanted this to be, uh, to not have the fill in on the appearance panel, if you wanted to not be able to change it or to have it um, exactly, the path's going exactly the way that the ribbon's going right now, you just highlight it, go to object and then go to expand appearance and then you've expanded the appearance of your ribbon. And then now that's exactly the ribbon, you've got no effects inside it whatsoever. Um, and you can ungroup it and do whatever you want and that is basically the whole tutorial thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed it give it a thumbs up if it's helped you uh, and in the comments below give me more suggestions of what I, else I should do um, thank you so much for watching goodbye